So let's look at what we'll discuss the impact of voice over IP today. The way that we communicate today is definitely different than we did 20 years ago. We'll also talk about what it means to have a convergent network and we'll see why a business would want to use voice over IP today. So the way that we communicate is definitely different like today. We're definitely in different times. I remember being a kid, that's me being a kid, and my mom and dad had been to go to pay phones. I was raised in the eighties, by the way, or I remember someone leaving a voicemail on your answering machine and you had a couple of days to get back to that person. Or one could go to a park and just enjoy the view without being bothered. But now, especially with mobile phones, this is quite different. You could be at a park, gazing at the water, enjoying the view, and someone can give you a phone call. It looks like a shark in the water. Point being here is that anyone is really a, a phone call or a text away. In token, I can be stuck in my car, stuck in traffic, and partaken on a conference call, which I'm sure many of us had done before, either sitting in your car, stay in a coffee shop, or maybe you're on lunch. And now with video being really popular today, instead of having an audio conference call, you easily could be having a face-to-face -face video conference with someone. Think about instant messaging. Maybe you have a client, my Cisco web ads, for example, or maybe I am in presence. In the past, if I had a document here, here's my document that I was working on, I could email that document to someone and they can modify it or email it back. Maybe I can save the document on a network drive and then the other person could access that same document and get back to me. But now with a messaging client, let's say this was James, I can message James and either attach his document right here, or maybe it's in a shared team space, for example, then James can immediately open up that document, make any changes to that document on the fly, or we can have a conversation going back and forth through messages that does not involve audio, so a phone call or video. So think about this. How many times have you been part of a group conversation about a project or maybe an, an application is down and there's a full blown conversation with just messages being sent back and forth. Someone can put in a URL there. Someone can reference a document, for example, but all this being done via applications that are part of our collaboration environment. Now, recently with the pandemic, we had kids at home, but still able to participate in school. So your child can have their book and still be part of a classroom environment, all virtual with the help of video conferencing. This definitely could not have been possible 10 or 15 years ago. Think about when you call a bank, I can easily call a main number and navigate through option one, two, three, and four. Maybe one is to open up an account, two is to report fraud, three is for customer service, and then four, maybe we're talking about a business account. But here we can navigate to the IVR and eventually reach an agent and he or she could help you with any one of those things. Previously, and my mom and dad still do this to this day, they drive to the bank, which is a couple of miles down the road and wait in line to physically talk to a person. Now that's only a few examples here, but I think you get the idea, but I'm pretty sure all of us can think of many ways that voice over IP has impacted the way that we communicate, not only in our personal lives, but also in our business and work environments. So you might have heard the term converge networks. And for us to understand what that really means, let's look at a network that's not converged. So you may have a different network for your data, different network for voice, different network for video. So with data here, we can have our computers our laptops or our printers, our scanners. I mean, tons of different devices that we can have on that data network for voice. We can have non IP phones and those phones require special hardware or special protocols or special software to manage that environment. The same applies to our video. Maybe we have special cables along with certain kind of hardware in order to manage that video environment. But here we see three different networks that someone or a group of people have to maintain. So here we see three different dedicated networks. This is harder to maintain. Let's take the example of voice here. So maybe we have an old phone system and let's say we have a problem with that phone or Jane retires and now there's someone else who is sitting there. Someone has to come out who is familiar with that phone system and assist us with making those changes or assist us with troubleshooting why that phone is not working. Same thing for video here. Maybe the network guys or those guys and girls who maintain our network are not familiar with this third party video system. So therefore, every time we have a change or have an issue, we have to call this third party company to come out. And obviously this does have a cost associated with it because no one really comes out to fix your stuff for free. You may have different cabling for all three networks. 
you may have different protocols that are being used for all these networks. So now when we're talking about a converged network, we're talking about a network that can transmit data, voice, and video all on that same network. So here we don't have a need to maintain different infrastructures or different networks. All these networks can be administered by the IT department. Many times we can use the same network cabling. So in the back of a Cisco phone, we have a port that we can connect our desktop to. So our PC is connected to our phone and then the phone is connected to a jack on the wall, for example. But here we have not only our computer, but our phone being used on the same network, being able to use network cables instead of proprietary cables used by a traditional phone system. You could use the same vendor for all three types of solutions. So if you wanted to, you can use Cisco for data, for voice, and for video. And then these services are easier to deploy because now we can design our networks, especially when we have new buildings that come up and those networks have the ability to offer all three services. And this is the reason that most cable companies will offer not only cable TV services, but also internet along with phone services. So they bundle all these services together because it's going over the same network. And also today in some areas, we have more bandwidth definitely making this possible, especially when you're watching high resolution content like Netflix and 4K, for example. Why would a business want to go with voice over IP? So we have moved as and changes. So previously, you might have had an older telephone system and someone had to come out and that person, he or she would charge to perform any moves as or changes or to troubleshoot an issue. So let's say we have Kelly and Kelly is moving offices. Instead of calling someone out to make that change, we now have the ability to perform that change ourselves if it's inside CUCM, for example. Kelly can just pick up her phone and take it to the new office. Or maybe she issued a new phone and someone on the VoIP team reconfigures that phone remotely and then Kelly's good to go. As we spoke about, it simplifies cabling because not everything, data, voice, and video are going over that data network. These services cannot be administered by IT staff. We have folks now who are familiar with your collaboration environment and applications and they can either do these Macs, or they can make changes to the environment to better serve the business. We have application consolidation. So let's say you are a hotel, you can improve the customer experience. So maybe you have endpoints in that environment that can give guests who are staying at that hotel information about local attractions, restaurants, room services, weather forecasts. Maybe they can check out via the phone. You're providing the ability for that customer to get all the information using technology that you have provided. And this helps your staff because he or she is not bombarded with phone calls from people staying at your hotel saying, what's for breakfast today? Is there anything to do around here? I'm from out of town. Do you know what the weather forecast is? Or maybe take a hospital, for example. So with a wireless phone, that being a wireless Cisco phone, every nurse could have a phone on them. So now they can make internal calls all day long using the voice over IP system. Maybe they can receive messages on that phone. For example, they may be paged by a doctor or from the patient in room 201. Or maybe they can receive updates from hospital systems that would make them more efficient at their job. We have toll bypass. So let's say I had office in Tampa, also had an office in Chicago, and also had an office in Las Vegas. If all these sites were connected together, then someone from Tampa could call someone in Chicago as if it was a local call. I wouldn't have to pay long distance charges, for example. Why? Because that phone call is now being made internally through my network. We have features like extension mobility. So you may have a bunch of cubicles. One, two, three. Okay, so that's four. And each cubicle has a phone. So I can walk in here and I can pick any cubicle that I want. Maybe that one right there. And with extension mobility, I can log into the phone and therefore I get my extension. My name shows up on the phone, along with any other features I am accustomed to. So I can use my laptop there. I can get comfortable knowing that I have my phone there. Or maybe this is a call center environment. So if I'm an agent and this is my cubicle there, and then we have a problem with my phone here. So what occurs here is that I am not able to work because I need someone from IT to come out and look at my phone, possibly diagnose it, troubleshoot it, replace it, so I can easily lose one hour, that's being really generous, but one hour of time 
where I'm not taking phone calls for this call center. Now this affects the rest of my call center because now there's many calls in queue. Customers are having to wait longer than usual because I'm unable to take phone calls. So with Tension Mobility, I can simply go to a different cubicle, log in, and then continue to work. Now I can still contact IT about that phone is not working there, but for the time being, can continue to take phone calls that are coming into that call center. We have website integration. How often do you go to a website, then a pop-up comes up saying, hey, do you need help? And you can open up a chat session with someone, an agent on the other end, and they can assist you with your customer support issue, with troubleshooting, so that customer didn't have to dial a phone number. They simply went to your website and opted for that chat that was presented to them. So when deploying voice over IP, do we just rip and replace the old phone system? And the answer is no, because that's too drastic of a change. Now, we're doing a greenfield deployment, so we are creating a network from scratch for a new company or a new office, that may be different. So let's say you had 50 offices or locations in your environment, you may want to upgrade them to voice over IP location by location. So we're talking more of a phased approach. That would be easier for the adoption of this voice over IP system. It also gives your IT staff a really great chance of a successful deployment. In fact, this is exactly what we did at one of my previous jobs. So we would go to one of those sites, maybe site eight, and we would sit down with the folks and say, how many phones do you have? Keep in mind, this is a site that had the traditional phone system and we were converting them to voice over IP. Do you have voicemail? Do you have an IVR? So a menu that a customer could choose from? Do we have any phone numbers that we have to put over or port over to that new system? Are there any shared lines? Do we need switches that provide PoE? I want to talk about power over eight that in a future nugget. But the takeaway here is that we would do a site survey to see what the needs were for that location. And we took that approach on a site per site basis, ensuring that we had a successful deployment as we went from that traditional PBS over to voice over IP. So in this nugget, we went over the impact of voice over IP as we see it today. It truly changes the way that we communicate. We also talked about converged networks and why we would want to use voice over IP today. So I hope it's been informative for you. I'd like to thank you for viewing. Thanks for watching. If you're interested in an IT career or looking to brush up your IT skills, check out cbtnuggets.com and sign up for a free trial.